metatarsal fractures showing a soft padded bandage with a caudal splint. Stirrups will be placed medial and lateral. Use a tongue depressor in between to make your life easier. If you have wounds, please do not put your stirrups in the wounds. Do not put your stirrups over the patient's pad as well. They need to be on the skin. First layer <clears throat> we will use today will be our cast padding. This stuff is nice. You can pull it as tight as you want. It will tear before it gets too tight. It is actually totally fine if it does that. Just lay it back down. Continue. You want to pull it nice and slug. Try to nice and snug. Try to get the little bumps to a minimum. We have a metatarsal fracture. We have to stabilize joint above and below. So I need to go above the tarsus and we'll get a nice layer there. Come back down. We want to make our padding in the same shape as our splint here. So our splint is straight. Our patient is not. So we will have to use this padding to increase the areas that need to have more and we'll continue to go there. So I would like to get another roll. We want to make sure that this is going to be comfortable for our patient. So we'll get a little bit of extra padding. That looks good to me. And we will go get our stretch gauze. This goes on nice and snug. If you don't compress, then it's going to be a little difficult for your bandage to stay in place. So we do need to have a bit of tension here. Not as much as a true Robert Jones, but it does need to be snug. And we will snug down our padding first. I like to tighten every half turn. It doesn't matter to me if you tighten every half turn or every full turn or however, just make sure that there is even compression for the entire length of the bandage. We will take our splint. Remember that we have our metatarsal fracture. So notice here I have the toes with the splint. So when the patient bears weight, the patient's gonna bear weight on the splint. It also goes above the tarsus there. That is actually very important on these um, in order to make our patient more comfortable. So we're going to use our stretch gauze to hold our splint in place. You will apply with the same amount of tension that you did over your cast padding. So we'll give it a good tug. So on some large breed dogs, such as you know Great Danes or anything that large, um, what happens is they are so heavy and so strong that even if we put the stretch gauze as tight as we can physically get it without causing a problem, it still creates a bit of a flip-flop effect with our splint. So the only thing that you can do to make that better is get a roll of your small tape you're going to actually wrap it around the limb but you're going to go at an angle so we kind of call it the argyle wrap we need to make sure that we don't wrap completely full circumference we want to always go at an angle and i will go back down you can kind of see our little argyle thing it's not that pretty but it helps hold the splint in place when they bear weight. So I'm going to take my stirrups right before I do my vet wrap. We'll twist them over at the foot, place them up on our bandage. Do the same thing with the other one. Don't pull, just fold it over and it will stick up on the other side to our bandage. Our last layer is our vet wrap. This is to help our padding stay clean. We need just a little bit of tension on this. This is where the small animals are a little bit different than the large animals. So we're gonna kinda lay this on a little bit. And we'll come over the top here. And let cover up my wrinkles, nobody knows. Go ahead and come back 
down on this one so we have that little support. I do like to make sure I get a little bit of either the vet wrap or an elastic tape on the bottom of that metal splint. So you'll notice the splint is here. We want to have something, maybe a little bit of tape down there will be fine or just let the vet wrap catch it. That way when they step down on it, it's not as slippery.